You know, it might be said that the show has already peaked, and if so, I think it's time to take a little trip into the valley. This is Valley from Blue Isle Studios, developed on the Unity engine, although you wouldn't necessarily know it from looking at it. You pick it up for around 15 to 20 of your local particular currency. What is it? Explore vast and beautiful world of Valley using the power of the LEAF suit. A fierce exoskeleton that grants exceptional speed and agility along with the phenomenal ability to manipulate life and death of all living things. Uh, if you don't know what this is, wow, you haven't really been paying attention. This is the chair acquisition. This is where we uh, pick a game, we talk about it, maybe give it a little bit of QA that its developers uh, neglected to give it, and uh, give you a review, a recommendation to whether or not you should uh, buy it or not. So we got our four cat. We got our four chair rating system. One chair means it's garbage. Two chairs means that's meh. Three chairs means that's pretty good. Four chairs means that's awesome. And we got our categories of doom mixed with the working shiny sounds, controls, and fun. So we do this in a bit of a roundtable fashion these days. So I think I'll start off with mixed with the working. Uh, there'll be some uh, inopportune spike crashes here. Uh, you'll be playing this game. Maybe maybe you'll be, be in a level transition. Maybe you'll just finish a level with a really annoying platforming segment, and then it will crash, and then you'll have to do the entire thing over again. Um, that that seems to be a universal constant, except on whatever Moon hardware Pedro is running. I think he's just running it on Windows. Let's be real. Um, <laughs> no, but, nope, nope, nope. Uh, you bumped to sixteen oh four, and I played the game all the way through without a single crash. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. On on uh, Fedora twenty seven sixty four bit on the i seven sixty seven hundred HQ with the GTX nine sixty M, I got a couple spike crashes in some fairly inopportune times, which almost made, almost made the nope out of the game, just because I, I get frustrated when I have to redo platforming segments. Uh, but uh, it's it's a little, it gets a little chuggy sometimes, uh, especially on laptop hardware. Uh, even on medium, it was struggling to keep above thirty for the most part. It was for the most part smooth at thirty, but there were definitely some moments where uh, it, was, it was chugging along. What about you, Ben? Uh, let's see, man. Yeah, Spite Crash is absolutely 10,000% legit. And yeah, for me, really in our opportune times, man. Bit me twice. Bit me twice hard. Not in a good way. No giggity for you, game. And since this game doesn't really have much of a save system, it saves when it fucking feels like it, which is basically means at the end of every level, guess who had to go through that level again? That's a real thing. Um, interesting, interesting bug for a Unity title. If you have Vivaldi or Chromium open, the game will not launch. So th there's your free pro tip right there. I don't know how the fuck they managed to do that. This is a known bug, though. I did go back and find out that this bug has been reported. And they have ignored it. I did, I did Bad death. Bad death. And here's the thing. On the Ryzen 7 1700, clocked at 3.6 gigajoules with a 980, a 1080p, 60, 70, all day long. Um, at UHD, 3840 by 2160, kind of mid-30s. I mean, 30s and above, but um, yeah, you're not really going to do, do a whole lot of UHD gaming on this with a 980. Pedro? Yeah, no, with the 1080, it was uh, fine at 1080p, even with everything cranked. I think I saw a couple of dips to the 40s in areas where it was a lot of lighting effects going on. But throughout most of the game, it was hitting 70, 80, 70, 80 all the time. So, yeah, no, it, it is pretty good with the Ryzen 5 backing it up. It had new issues running, but there was one thing that didn't actually make with the working for me, which was the subtitles. Because whenever the subtitles came up, I would see the first line, and then it would stop. It wouldn't keep changing the subtitles as the uh, audio tape or whatever you were listening to went along. It would just be stuck there. That was the one thing That's that what you get for really didn't make with the working for me. Okay, so I collectively... What did this three, end up getting? I, I think about three chairs. I, I, I gave it three. You yeah. gave it two? Yep. And Pedro Pedro gave it four. So moving on to the shiny mm -hmm. and sounds. Ven, I, I hear you like to gush about this game. 
I'm not really gushing. I'm just saying what I'm seeing with my pussies, man. I like games like this. Why do I like games like this? They prove that Unity can be both performant and pretty. Valley does these things and does it in spades, indoor, outdoor areas. All wicked smooth. Not something you see with Unity a whole lot. Environments completely coherent. Mm -hmm. There's no fucking store-bought asset bullshit and just randomly stapled in. Kind of wish the main baddies that you normally encounter... Uh, they just look a little outside of the world. I don't know. That didn't 100% gel with me, but let's talk about the music because it's totes. 100% totes. Outstanding. I loved it. That caught me off guard. Mm -hmm. What the hell is going on there, man? Didn't expect that. I haven't heard shit. I was like, oh, man, this is unexpected since Hollow Knight, another indie title that I really enjoyed. From an indie developer, because you don't normally get that business. The voice acting is what I like to call passable plus, which basically means they didn't go with the lowest fucking bidder. I mean, it it's good enough to get the job done and you're not going, whoa, that was somebody across the room using a headset mic. Um, uh, visually, oh, Howard literally phoning in his lines. Visually, pretty amazeballs, even more amazeballs that it runs like it does and looks like it looks, proving that Unity is a tool, and it can be used to great effect. And I believe it was done great effect, man. I, I mean, all across the board, straight up four chairs on this one. Oh, yeah. Pedro? It uh, is very, very, very pretty, and the music is just freaking spot on, as I already mentioned. Uh, there are a couple of um, running on rails, uh, electrified rail sequences on the first one. The music alone turned it from just being a bit where you run down a corridor to, OMG, run faster, run faster, jump, run fast again. Whee! And you also need, you also need like to a... point out that the music is synced with landing on the rails. I mean. Oh, yes, it yeah. is. Uh, while you were in the air, it was a very soft but still epic thing. And the moment you hit the rails, it just hammered down again. It's. It was really well done. I was smiling like a lunatic throughout the whole thing. That was a really good set piece. And it shows just if you put a little bit of effort into the aesthetics of your game, you you can get a lot, mm. a lot done. Oh, so oh kudos yeah. to them. It, the, and and the, the games, I, I feel one of its strongest points is definitely just the, the visual and audio fidelity. Um, again, look what happens when you don't use stock Unity assets. The soundtrack um, mm -hmm. is a little flute heavy. It kind of reminds me of kind of uh, Jethro Tull, Ian Anderson style Fever Dream, almost. Um, there, there's lots of good instrumentation, lots of good soundtrack variety in the various areas. Uh, the 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 battle music, if you can call it that, is sufficiently. I don't know. Not no. I, I wouldn't say hype worthy, but it it definitely imparts a like a sense of drama or urgency. Um, I don't, I don't know. I, I kind of disagree with Ven on the on the the main baddie thing. I, I I feel they look about consistent with sort of the the feel. They're supposed to be like the weird energy creature things. Especially, I don't, I don't know. Were they supposed to be like witches or wendigos or something? It's got them up those there. Guys uh, I don't know what the hell they're supposed yeah. to be. I'm just like, okay, they're all right. I, this is this, these are the things I'm going to be fighting all the time. Yeah, and then. I mean, there, there's really only uh, three types of enemies that you fight, and they're color coded depending on how much energy, life force you got to pump into them. But I mean, beyond that, that's ever, ever, everything else is uh, pretty much spot on. I, th I think this is pretty much four to the floor for shiny sounds. Yep, cross oh, the yeah. board. Let's do it. Boom. Agreed. All right. How did it control, Jay? Baby. Uh, you know what? Uh, the what I I have one minor gripe with it, and that is sometimes you get a little too into like the jumping and whatnot, or the or the swinging or the uh, electrified rail things, and then you just overshoot whatever the fuck you're aiming at, and it's it's the, it's just a problem with first person platformers where you can't really see where your uh, feet or like a shadow where you're landing, uh, because you you mm -hmm. it's a little it's a little iffy where or when you're going to land. Um, but other than that, I mean, I, I played a little bit with the Steam controller. Uh, the first person view doesn't really work with this sort of game because you need to you need to move the camera around a lot, especially when you're uh, doing the hookshot sequences. Um, 
and uh, with keyboard and mouse. It caused me extreme pain, but that's due to an entirely different issue. Hmm. What, what, what about what about you, Pedro? What do you think? Uh, well, it's a first-person running slash platforming game. Uh, it works with the mouse and keyboard. The it's another it's the thing that this game does really well that a lot of Unity games seem to cock up consistently, which is mouse sensitivity. Mouse sensitivity slider on this one works, and it's actually very very accurate. So kudos to them for that. And some of the set pieces, uh, you're usually running a little too fast to actually pay attention to them, or if you're running a little too slow, well, the set piece is going to be over by the time you get there. So I would like a little bit of a uh, halfway point in between the two. Not enough to dig in a chair, but absolutely would like a little bit more granular control over the speed of what you're doing. Not just, you know, stupidly fast in human speed or just the casual jog <laughs> uh this is something i thought would be fun to actually sit back and play with so i, I whipped out the uh, punishment device strider got for me the steam controller <laughs> thinking all right I thought you're talking about the writing crop <laughs> anyway so i broke out the steam controller and <laughs> it seemed like it'd be a nice fit for this unfortunately for whatever reason the right areola. There, there was just some jank with the camera movement. It was like slight pause hesitation. It's like, what the fuck's going on here? Enough to where it's like, this better not be an issue with the damn game when I break out the gerbil. Grab the gerbil. No problem whatsoever. So I played it like that, and it worked as expected. Everything logically laid out. I, I never had to, you know, that's something you know you got right when you don't have to hit escape. And it's like, all right, what fucking does what then? This game's like, yeah, it's your basic shit. There's nothing cray-cray in here to deal with, and I don't think any of us had any problems with any controls. I'm not going to dig in for the Steam controller because, you know, Pedro, you got a point, man. It's probably not really Best meant for this. Game. I just, hey, man, the Steam controller is supposed to handle shit like this, though. So I'm not, I can't blame the... <laughs> can't. Well, that's the purpose of the damn thing. Think about it. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm right, so you can do that. Make that noise all you want. It's turning me on. Keep going. Um... <laughs> I'm gonna say four I'll chairs all the way down. All the way down. Yep. Seems legit. Four chairs for control. And finally, fun. Pedro, you get your spiel out first, why don't you? Okay. It is a, it is a uh teeny tiny spiel. Because there is just one reason I can't give this game four chairs for the fun, and well, it's the big elephant in this particular room, which is the fact that the game is short criminally short i was having fun i was having a lot of fun and stupid monkey game took my fun away from me it i finished it in about two hours and 16 minutes that's the playtime my save file says and it, it took my fun away from me but in all seriousness i guess i um i have to actually do a little breakdown and get a little bit more technical like i'm off to do uh Everyone takes movement for granted when it comes to a video game. These guys said, you know what? We're going to take movement. We're going to quadruple down on it. And we're going to explore exactly uh, what video game, video game movement can do to improve or, you know, a cha completely change the experience of a video game. And they freaking nailed it. Uh, I've... Probably, no, I can safely say that I've never had so much fun just running and jumping down a corridor for five minutes in the way I did in Valley. It's, this game is the perfect example of aesthetics and narrative being used solely to further the mechanics or mechanic, singular, since there's only the one, but they did it really well. They did it goddamn well. If it had come out this year, I'd say Linux got he, uh contestant easily, but it's not. So, yeah. <laughs> Jordan? I was going to pass it off to you, actually. Too late. But, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I mean, but, but here's the thing. 21 wet, stinky maple bucks is a bit of a big ass for this jolly little jaunt. Uh, the game itself is actually pretty shallow because it, ha it has its platforming, platforming mechanics uh, it gives you uh, occasional the occasional new tool at a given level 
to overcome that level's specific obstacle, be it the hook shot or the magnetic boots or the double jump, or finally the thing that lets you run across water and like supercharge your jump. Um, yeah, the Jesus module. Then it's then then mm-hmm. then it's kind of <laughs> never used. It's not really brought up again, except for one or two points. Um, one thing I did kind of like is uh, later on in the game they do give you some options as to how you want to specifically tackle a couple of the movement issues mm-hmm. or the movement problems, which is nice. Um, and, uh, and, but honestly, the execution is pretty spot on. Like uh, what? So I, I can, I can sort of forgive the shallow mechanics um, and the story is pretty decent too. Um, I more of a fan of emergent narratives as opposed to the kind of stuff that is spoon fed to you, like in this game. But at the same time, again, the right the writing is pretty decent. It's well executed, so I can't fault it for that. The story is a bit of like a who done it um, mystery of let's explore what's going on here. Except there's not really a lot of discovery. It's just people telling you what happened as you uh, progress through the levels. Um, the, the the crashes really really hurt my fun in this game. Uh, it, the uh, both the three spike crashes I had. Uh, basically tacked on another hour to the gameplay. I finished it in uh, four hours. Um, prob- it probably would have been less if I didn't have to redo a bunch of stuff. That said, um, for five bucks, this is this is a pretty fun game. Um, it's well it's well done. It has an engaging story. Um, that's that's pretty much all I can say about it. Uh, it gets a solid three chairs out of me for fun. What about you, Vin? Okay, the five bucks, something we need to touch on. It's like, why are you reviewing such an old game? Let me tell you, Brad. I'm going to tell you it was five bucks on bundle from some bundle place. I just bought it for myself. I was like, oh, yeah, I remember wanting to fuck around with this game. Didn't want to fuck around with it for 20 bucks. And um, I played it five. And I was like, okay, pretty good. It was really short. But I was like, I, I spent five dollars for it. That was an enjoyable romp, which it was. However, if I had paid that iron price, currently at nineteen ninety nine, what stinky cashes? I'd been a little bit angry, maybe maybe not angry, bit miffed. Now, the good, you know, the storytelling, world building, clearly something these motherfuckers know how to do. Okay, I enjoyed the ride all the way through, and um, I honestly thought that they were going to pull like some gotcha right up until I jumped out of the tube at the end. I'm not going to spoil anything. If you want to see that, watch my accident. Watch me accidentally beat the game. That's on YouTube. Uh, I Up until that point, I was all like, you know what? They want me to think the game's almost over. Then, the, But it's not really. There it pulls like, oh, no, here's the rest of the game. And there's like another two or three hours. The game was over. And, uh, you know, I vend my way through it in four hours. Vinway's like the opposite of the wrong way where you just, go straight ahead and all the shit that's there to distract you is like, Hey, go collect these things. Fuck these things. I got to get to the exit. You know, I'm going to finish the game in four hours. Rick, whatever. I liked it. Um, if you can pick it up on sale, you see this thing, I'd say even half off. Okay. Let's say 10, what sneaky cash is just, just keep in mind in, unless you're a collection monkey, like, or just straight up collect, mm-hmm. you know, coll- collectio maniac. I want to combine two words, but my brain's not mm-hmm. letting me because I'm really tired. Um, pick it up. Uh, five, absolutely worth four hours of my time. 20 bucks? Uh-uh. Uh, I, I wish there was more. It's- I enjoyed the world. I uh, really dug it. So, yeah. Yeah, and uh, honestly, even for 10 bucks you get more value than like the extended edition of return of the King. Cause at least you're not bored throughout the entire thing. So I think, uh, I think <laughs> all in all, that gets three chairs for the fun. Mm-hmm. Um, and, mm-hmm. uh, f- finally tell me that all up that like it's a solid three chairs. So we got anything you want to add on any, any leftover bits before we go to the hate mail. I think we're good, man. Nope, yeah, uh, the 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 one thing I think you can do though is if you if after you beat the game, if you do want to go back and do all the collecty things, you can, and you can even like sort of go back and forth yep. in between levels with your newfound power ups and maybe access areas that you previously weren't able to do. I know there was there was one area I was like one medallion short, and I'm like, God damn, I don't feel like going and collecting that one last medallion. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, that's that's definitely a thing. So.